on Instagram and Twitter. It's at Trenton365. You can also post your events to the Trenton365 community calendar page on Facebook. WIMG 1300 is New Jersey's oldest radio station, and you can follow us on social media outlets, WIMG 1300. And if you're watching, it's over WPHY Channel 25, covering Mercer County, New Jersey, through Verizon Fios. In the studio with me... I'm going to back up. You know, I'm often talking about um, stuff that goes on off the air and about how interesting it is. So, um, literally, you guys caught Evelyn uh, filling up the water from my guest um, who's in the studio. Uh, he's an educator, Patrick Williams. He's uh, Him and I have been talking for quite some time, and he's the one who introduced me to Vaunt, uh, my intern. Um, so I got to give him public credit for that. And we're going to be talking about not only his background and his history, but he's got his hands in a lot of different pies, um, and he's doing a lot of wonderful things, and he's very passionate about youth. So um, literally, that's one of the reasons why him and I have really connected. And then we're going to tease a little bit about um, a project that I'm it really encouraging him to do in 2019 so stay tuned for that as well but without any further ado Patrick Williams welcome finally <laughs> to getting on to the show literally folks we've probably had at least five different dates mm -hmm. that have been scheduled and something happened on both sides and it just didn't work out but now I finally got you here right before Christmas yeah no doubt so it's like a perfect season. present a season. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway welcome man thank you thank you for having um, me thank so you. um how have you been and we're going to get into the the transitioning because you you got a new position yeah um at my alma mater shout out to you and Hyde Blue Devils in the house <laughs> but um yeah when I first met you um you were working with Trenton High School mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and now you're working at Ewing High School. Uh, are you all settled in and everything? Um, I, we're still settling. We're still <laughs> settling. Um, so this position, so when I was at Trenton High School, I worked for um, the school-based youth ser service pro school -based youth services program um, at Trenton under uh, the amazing director, Melda Grant. Um, shout out to Trenton. Um, I was there for two years, and I loved the position as a mental health counselor. Uh, the opportunity came up for a director position for the same program, only at Ewing High. Um, I applied and I got it. Um, there's been a lot of transition as far as we're kind of moving. We were outside in the annex building and now uh, we've moved into the school. Uh, we kind of, there was, there was kind of like a clean house, like there was new administration, there's new, um, there's new personnel as far as the school-based pro uh, program so everybody's brand new uh so we're pretty much almost like creating the program again from kind of scratch and so that's been a that's been a process you know that doesn't happen overnight but i want to say we're definitely moving in the right direction um i'm very excited uh for the stuff that we've kind of been doing and and we have um i think that my greatest my greatest um I, I place great importance on the students that we serve. And so that's one of the things that I can say I'm proud of is that we're really starting to serve the students, you know, and really getting into the, the school community because school issue services um, throughout New Jersey, there's 70 plus high schools uh, and middle schools that have this program and really they, they function they're not meant to function as an outside agency coming into the school. We're really supposed to function like we're a part of the school. And I think that's some, like what we're doing. Um, and so I'm, yeah, I'm excited uh, for, for all the opportunities that are kind of coming in that, in that space. Mm -hmm. Now, um, before, because I, I want to make sure that, that in this short amount of time, and I know that we've talked, you're going to be back, you know, as the yeah. season and, and the year progresses, but can you share your contact information? Because I want to make sure that people get that information Absolutely. early and then throughout the program. Absolutely. Well. Uh, one of the, one of the projects, which we'll kind of talk about, um, I'm, I'm starting my own nonprofit called the Remember Project, and one of the initiatives under that project, which we can uh, kind of share more, is Survive the Encounter. And so the email for that uh, is survivetheencounter1 at gmail.com. Uh, you can also find us at Survive the Encounter on all your social media platforms, whether it be Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, but Survive the Encounter 1 at um, at gmail.com uh, my own personal email as well is patrickwilliams777 at gmail.com so if there's any you know 
any requests, any booking, any you know, speak at an engagement or anything like that, or or you know, you just want to learn more about the projects that we kind of have going on, um, you can definitely email me. Great, surviving the survive, survive, survive the, the encounter. encounter, survive mm-hmm. the encounter. Okay, folks. One. Survive the, the encounter, encounter one, one at gmail.com. All right. And on social media, there's no one. Correct. It's just survive the encounter. Straight. Survive the encounter. And, folks, I encourage you again to um, not only uh, be entertained, so to speak, with air quotes, with the guests that I bring on, but there's the impetus behind this is for that, for you to connect with them to not only further their mission, but for you to actually get actively involved in building the community that you want. I think that that is, that is truly in my opinion the only way that we're going to overcome a lot of these obstacles that we have and that's for us all to be involved in the process of what our communities look like even if you don't have children who are school age it doesn't mean you can't be involved in a school board or go to school meetings um, planning board you may not be opening a business or anything like that but your opinions reflect and affect directly what your community looks like. So you've got a voice, and uh, part of democracy is for people, everyone, to use their voices um, to share their opinions and their thoughts. So, Patrick, let's get into um, a bit more about who you are. I want you to run through quickly your background (laughs) and your history because I'm going to drive this conversation to survive um, the encounter. because Absolutely. because I think that that is that is where I think it's going to stimulate more especially more people in the audience the youth who are going to like kind of hear this and perk up and say wait a minute that's coming over WIMG they're talking about that stuff <laughs> but but let's give an overall summary of who you are and I do want you to throw in your faith as well okay all right so um, let me just say I am I am uh, not from New Jersey. Uh, I was born and raised uh, in Georgia. I was born in Georgia, raised between Georgia and Albany, New York. Um, I have a single single mother, raised by a single mother. Um, and then I was raised by my grandp- grandparents on a farm, if you can believe it, cows, tractors, crops, all of that good stuff uh, in Georgia. Uh, I went back and forth until about high school. Um, then I stayed in Albany, New York uh, during my high school career. My mother actually um, developed multiple sclerosis and sarcoidosis and became disabled. Um, went to a nursing home for over a year. I kind of, you know, moved around, or I was I was at my godparents' home. But um, I ended up high school was very tumultuous. Went to four different high schools, five years. Um, I dropped out. I got my GED. I was home homeless for some of that time um, before and after. Um, really. I did not believe that I was going to be successful. I did not believe that I was gonna, you know, have any kind of college success or or anything, have a family of any sort. Um, But it was a family friend that really like took me under their wing and brought me to Lemoyne College in Syracuse, New York, which is a small Jesuit school. Um, They took a chance on me, uh, Carl Thomas. Uh, who is a phenomenal director of the HEOP program, uh, their HEOP program, took a chance on me. And I think that's really when my I started to transform um, and I started to see more of kind of the vision um, that God intended for me. Um, my sophomore year in college is when I started getting really kind of serious about my faith. I was always raised in the church, grandparents, you know, we went to Christian Valley Baptist Church in Catala, Georgia, where the Reverend Ponce de Leon Johnson was our pastor. <laughs> I love it. Exactly. And so, <laughs> and, he, and he's just as you would imagine him. Um, but, like, that's where I was raised. Um, but I was in raised in Baptist churches, and, and I really could do church well. But I didn't really tap into, like, who I was as a person in faith and in my journey with Christ, my own personal kind of relationship. I want to jump in here um, mm-hmm. because you you said you did church well. I want you to explain that because I think that they, I know there's people in mm-hmm. the audience who that resonates with. Right. So, so what do you mean by you did church well? Um, I would say that. I knew all the sayings that I that I had to say in church, right? Um, I knew how to dress the appropriate attire for church, the quote-unquote appropriate attire. I knew um, 
the appropriate hymns and the appropriate gospel songs and the appropriate responses for the pastor, you know, when they would, uh, they would, you know, initiate call and response. I knew how to tap my neighbor and tell my neighbor what the pastor said while he was preaching. I knew, um, you know, I was singing in a youth group and I was doing these things, going on, you know, going on trips with youth conference and all this kind of stuff. But I think that in my heart, um, I really wasn't getting down to like what was going on with me spiritually. Um, and it showed a lot when I would say when I had those tough times between my teenage years and my early 20s, like that it was really tumultuous in a lot of different ways. And I remember the, the end of my freshman year, I was a 21 year old freshman in college. So there's that. Um, I was very popular um, that first year because guess what? Guess what you can do when you're 21? Mm-hmm. You can you can buy buy alcohol and you can drink. And also, I was kind of on par with my the, you know the juniors and seniors, so I had a lot of those friends. And so I was a man, and I'm a very gregarious, outgoing person. So you know, I I love parties. I was the life of the party. I mm-hmm. you know I'll be out all you know Friday, Saturday, Thursday. We call it Thirsty Thursdays. Um, like. Yeah, I was with it, and I felt a deep sense of emptiness. And I can remember there was a time where I'm in the shower, and I'm crying because I feel so empty. And I remember praying and asking God, God, please send me some people who are my age, who are on fire for Christ, who are really trying to walk out this faith thing, like on, on not not just you know knowing the kind of walk or, or, or playing the part but really like being a part of it because that's not something that I've seen you know mm-hmm. and, and I said to myself there's got to be more than this and that next semester at, as a matter of fact a friend of mine she had a car I didn't so <laughs> we would you know we would drive around to different churches to kind of visit different churches and we actually got linked up to a, a bible study that was going on at Syracuse University which is about five minutes from my campus and it was called Thursday Night Live. It's there that I met some people who are my peers who are really, really on fire for Christ and really about like walking this faith thing out. Like, what does that look like? And not trying to be a square doing it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and so they were really about that life. And I, I latched on to that. And my I actually gained mentors. So two of the, the two instructors were in that Bible study. I still talk to them to this day on a weekly basis. I call them my brothers. We share life together, you know, and it's been, you know, that amazing journey. And it, it didn't all happen at once. You know, as soon as I went to Bible study, I didn't all of a sudden stop partying. Oh! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? no, no, don't you know? work that way, folks. <laughs> one, you know, maybe I'll cut out Saturdays. You know what I mean? But no, but seriously, little by little, I kind of, you know, I saw a transformation in myself. You know, um, I want to say how I got the jersey is God tricked me. People ask me, long story short, like I thought that I don't know what I wanted to do for graduate school. Um, somebody told me, hey, like. If you're going to a friend of mine's who are friends of mine who are in graduate school, they were like, if you're going to graduate school, you better make sure that you, you know, you're doing something that you love. And I was like, what do I love? I love black folks and I love Jesus. Like I love communities of color hey. and I love, and I, and I love Jesus. And so I was trying to find like a religion program kind of the, uh, or religious and, you know, black studies program. I ended up, you know, calling to up to Princeton and, uh, I really believe God orchestrated. That's a longer conversation. We don't have time for that. But I really believe that God orchestrated me to be at Princeton because it wasn't my 2.78 from Lemoyne. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't that. You're not um, the only one, bro. Right. Come on now. It, it's it wasn't right my. Now. It, yeah. But but he really like. He he really placed me in a position where I could you know where he wanted me to be, and then from here, from being at seminary, I got my uh, my dual degree. Masters in divinity. I also got a master's in social work, and so, you know, to drop out with a with a GED now has like three degrees, you know, and so, and that's not bragging on me. That's that's hopefully encouragement for for somebody else who feels like they were in that space where my life my life is over and I can't do any better than what I have. Um, but you know, that's that's kind of where I am. I do want to jump in there, and uh, when you say PTS, you mean Princeton Theological Seminary. Correct. Great. Correct. Yeah. So for the for the folks, I mean, there's a lot of PTS 
uh, stuff that's happening um, here in the area. PTS is very connected to a lot of churches here um, in Trenton and also in Mercer County, so so that's good as well. We've got just a couple minutes left. Um, I want you to, to just uh, share your contact information one more time, Patrick, yep. and then we're going to sound off, go to commercial break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to jump right into your nonprofit. Okay. Um, so my contact information, once again, is my personal is patrickwilliams777 at gmail.com. Um, the project uh, that we're the, the initiative that we're starting is survive the encounter, and so the the G, the email is survive the encounter one the number one at gmail dot com. Uh, you can find us on any social media platform at survive the encounter. Fantastic. Patrick Williams, educator, is my guest in the first segment of tonight's Trenton three sixty five program. Stay tuned as we're up on a commercial break. If you have dreamed of getting your college degree, there has never been a better time to be a New Jersey resident. Through the state's new Community College Opportunity Grant Program, Mercer County Community College is offering free tuition to county residents who qualify. Tuition awards will be applied after all other financial aid, and your household income may not exceed $45,000. The college is hosting multiple information sessions about this life-changing opportunity. Learn more by visiting mccc.edu slash free. That's mccc.edu slash free. Welcome back to the Trenton 365 show. Shout out to my man DJ Say What, Steve Cook, um, the producer who's normally here. And I also want to give mad love to uh, Vinny Stansberry, who got me into this business, who's now behind the board. You're going to wave? There we go. All right. Anyway, and plus, folks, why don't you call WIMG 609 695 1300 and demand that Jock and Vini have a show. I think you'll enjoy that. Yeah, Von, uh, look, Evelyn's even giving some claps over there as well. So in the studio with me, I've got educator Patrick Williams. And Patrick has been sharing a bit about his background, um, about um, making his way, being tricked by God <laughs> to come to New Jersey. Um, graduate of Princeton Theological Seminary, PTS. Um, he is now working at Ewing High School. Shout out to the Ewing High School Blue Devils, class of 1987. And um, he is working with school-based youth services program and uh, Patrick just to finish up with that segment and mm -hmm. then transition to your nonprofit what are some of the um, I, I don't want to say issues but tell me more about the program school-based youth services and what it encompasses of course um, so we do we do mental health and, and youth enrichment support really um, that's anywhere from individual counseling group counseling we serve Ewing High School and their families um, it's a state grant and so basically what happens is the state gives a school the funding and the funding um, the school ask an outside agency to manage that money and with that they hire a director a mental health counselor and a youth development specialist and we can do a myriad of things um, one of the things that we do um, like I said individual counseling we do family counseling uh, we do groups we might do college tours we might have in speakers things that really enrich these students so we have a boys group and a girls group um, that are going into Ewing uh, that we're they're running in Ewing right now we have a tranquil Thursdays that kind of we like the kids to shut down their electronic devices and really just be mindful um, especially around this time there's a lot of anxiety stress depression um, and so we try to really be a support to to their students and their families in this you know in this space awesome mm -hmm. awesome and uh is this a program that uh you can take outside funding or it literally all has to come through the grant um we can do through grants and partnerships um but yeah no like it really basically is the grant um but we like i said sometimes we do partner with outside uh organizations um to offer you know, different things. Uh, last year, when I was working at Trenton, there was an outside production company that wanted to partner um, with the school, with the drama teacher, and the drama teacher asked me to kind of come alongside, and we did a reading of Raising in the Sun, which was very impactful. 
um, not only for the students but also kind of for the community because they were able to we did it in the in the community as well and then we talked about some of the issues that came up during that play and so it's pretty great stuff like you come to us with an idea we figure out how to make it work uh, if we can make it work and you know as long as the kids are are really service and the community service is it's awesome mm -hmm. and perfect mm -hmm. i love that kind of work all right so now let's talk about um surviving the encounter um and i want you to to talk specifically about the vision that you shared with me about where this would take place yeah and then work backwards from there okay so survive the encounter specifically um is an initiative um that kind of birthed out of the new stories actually a birth out of my own lived experience i will say this honestly there's not one black male that i have um interacted with for any amount of time that does not have like a police interaction story um we hear about the Botham jeans. We hear about the Fernando Castiles. We hear about, you know, the, the different um, young black males who end up being gunned down. The young man uh, in Alabama, was it, uh, who was actually um, apprehending the gunman. The young man who mm -hmm. was a bouncer at a club who actually uh, apprehended the gunman and then was shot by police. Like, we hear about these stories. Um, but the truth is not all those interactions end in, in death. Um, they might, but they might end in violence and they also might end in just trauma, mm -hmm. right? Um, there was a situation where I was driving a car and I was out in Bordentown and I was, you know, driving back to Trenton. I was working and there was a cop that came behind me and immediately my mind started racing. Okay, where can I pull over? Who has the most cameras? You know, where, like, where's my insurance? Where's my wallet? And I made a left, and then, like, I was at a red light, and then there was another cop that came at the other light. Did he call for backup? Like, is there other cars coming? I'm, light turns green, I take a left, they don't follow. But I, I realized, like, I was so apprehensive and so anxious and so fearful because I know what could possibly happen, mm -hmm. right? And I've had multiple experiences like that. And when I, when I, so I want to really video what it what it is is really chronicling those experiences. Um, I want people to, if you have an experience that with a police interaction, I want you to email it to us at survive the encounter one at gmail. Include your name, include your contact information. And um, what we want to do, if you're willing to, we'll put you on camera. If you're not willing to, we can even we don't necessarily even have to show your face. But the idea is that if we start talking about these experiences we can humanize these interactions because what happens is we see these news stories and automatically it's one side or the other that talks about oh well if he had a just if he hadn't resisted and this and then a third but these are people these are human beings and there there was a recent study and i didn't have a chance to pull it up before i came in the studio but there was a recent study that they did with police officers an implicit bias test where they first gave a baseline and they showed off like they showed like what their propensity is to shoot in a certain situation. And then they took the same officers, they read them a story where a person of a minoritized community saved their life, and then they put them back in the same simulation, and what they found is that they were much less likely to use deadly force. When they had in inherently heard this story of where somebody who was minoritized had saved their life, basically what they're doing is just humanizing these interactions and if we can get to a point I, what I want to do is d develop you know a collection of documentary whether it be a podcast form whether it be on video form we can do it on multiple platforms where we can just humanize these experiences then I believe that we can change the face of these interactions where it won't be I feared for my life so I had to kill this person yeah you know um being born in this area and growing up in this area and recognizing the historical background of mm -hmm. uh, Trenton and Mercer County and this is truly the birthplace of America regardless of what any historians say George Washington became George Washington on the streets of Trenton and and if, if he didn't win those battles of Trenton subsequent Princeton etc he wouldn't have become the first president etc but diving into the history of, of the founding of America this was always a very 
diverse community. Mm-hmm. There was Native Americans, there were free and enslaved blacks, there were free and enslaved whites, there was Eastern Europeans and Germans and British. We're all here. Mm. As far back as we can remember, I mean, there's there's plenty of uh, historical information about affluent African Americans living in Hunterdon County, mm. and I think about the history, right? And then I think about we haven't really had any major issues of police violence that was deemed racist or culturally biased here. I mean, we we've had things where people get pulled over, et cetera, but nothing where people were shot. Or, or, or killed on the streets. Mm. And, and for those of you who are watching, <laughs> you can see my facial expression. I'm going by the, the level of some of the stuff that's on the national scene, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's because there is a bit more of that humanity mm. in the officers who are born and raised here who grow up in diverse communities. Um, you know, in, in Ewing, for example, you teach in Ewing, you see mm-hmm. how diverse Ewing Township is. And uh, I know several law enforcement officers through the years who have told me of their experiences of of coming in contact with someone who wasn't the same ethnic background, but knowing that, hey, you, you knew them or you knew their family or something like right, that. Right, right. And I think that lends towards what you were saying about the, the human, uh, humanization of what we need to start doing. We need to, to start having these conversations where people don't necessarily look at someone and immediately put them in some sort of a box right need to to address not only what they're feeling inside internal right Mm -hmm. or what the other person is feeling Um, i'm going to give you one other example i want to throw it back to you Um, recently i was talking with someone who's a law enforcement officer and um, this officer was talking about how the importance of getting information from the street level Mm -hmm. and that their job at first was a punishment to Mm. put them at the street level but this officer took that opportunity to learn the community yeah so this officer now even talking back to me was able to name names of the people he was coming in contact with they were coming in contact with not necessarily saying that person or this or that or whatever, but right. actually knew them by name. Right, right. And that dawned on me, like, how many officers can actually say that, that when they're on the beat, mm-hmm. they can call someone by name? And if they can call that person by name, I think there's less of a chance for them to pull their 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 arms and shoot right because they know that person right so we need to get in my opinion and i'm not a law enforcement person but in my opinion we need to get to a point where we really start looking at each other as human beings recognizing that there's there's different things in each other's lives that prevent people maybe they didn't have an opportunity to go to go to school get a better education or their their environment that they grew up in etc and what does that how does that play into where they are currently and if the situation was reversed couldn't we all be in the, in that bad situation or that bad mm. place? So um, that was a bit long and drawn out. I normally don't do that on the program, but survive the encounter is something, folks, that I'm I'm really encouraging Patrick to do um, because I think that it's really needed. Not only needed nationally, but I think that there's an opportunity for Mercer County and the connections that Patrick has at Trenton High School and in Ewing High School for this to be a program that can easily be spread throughout. Uh, Mercer County and also create some dialogue between the youth that are here um, and also to provide an opportunity for our law enforcement officers so that they can also I don't care what anyone says everybody's got stress so if you're a law enforcement officer there's a lot of bravado you have to have and and so forth but you're going through stuff too I know you got issues with bills and holidays and relationships just like everyone else we all want the same stuff we all want to love we want to see our kids grow up right. and be happy and successful and enjoy our time with our friends and family. And I think the best way to do that is let's sit down, let's have a meal, let's uh, humanize each other and go from there. Patrick, share your contact information one more time. And then I'd like for you to put a challenge or a charge out to the listening audience about Survive the Encounter. Um, I would say, one, yes, my contact information, once again, survive the encounter one at gmail.com. Uh, like I said, uh, if you have 
My challenge is if you do have a story, an interaction with officers, whether it be positive or negative um, or neutral, um, we want you to email us. Give us your name. Uh, give us your contact information and give us give us a real brief description of your experience. Like I said, what we want to do is we want to create a, a database or a space where we can kind of document interactions um, and humanize um humanize these we want people from all walks of life to share kind of like their experiences um you know there was a there was a viral video where this young lady this, this black woman who was a wife of a military officer was um crying like weeping because she was scared after this officer pulled her over this officer had no ill intent he came out i believe he hugged her or he he consoled her in some way but it was just like the fear the manifest fear and i'm sure that it goes both ways i have frat brothers and friends who are officers or retired police officers family members who are military so it it really it does we need this connection we need this kind of humanizing experience so that we all can feel um like we are one community great Patrick Williams, educator. Um, you can reach him via email, survive the encounter, the number one at gmail.com. And you can find his organization on social media platforms Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Survive the encounter. You've been listening and watching the Trenton 365 show. Stay tuned for segment number two. <laughs>
Welcome to the Trenton 365 Show, or segment number two. Should I speak? Jacques Howard here, your creator and host. You can send me an email, Trenton365show at gmail.com. You can also follow me on social media platforms, Facebook, Trenton365 Show, Instagram, and Twitter at Trenton365. So, if you're listening to the program on a regular basis, you know how supportive I am of art in general and that I look at art as literally everything. Everything that has something to do with creation to me is art, um, from architecture to performing arts, etc. And uh, in the studio with me now, I've got OMN7, which is uh, Omni, basically. And we're going to get into all the details about that. Yeah, I'm a little older too, so I got a little tongue tied on that. But um, this arts collective is doing some pretty awesome stuff. And uh, one of the people, Philip, will be on a little bit later on. Um, Phil has been on the program showcasing his type of art, um, but now he's partnered with Brass Rabbit and uh, Billy D, and they're doing some really awesome stuff. Not only spoken word, but visual art as well, and I'm sure it'll be some performing arts looped into this as well. So we're going to talk a bit about the program, and then for you to be encouraged to hopefully meet us on Thursday night, because they're going to be part of a spoken word event that's taking place at the Trenton Free Public Library here in Trenton, New Jersey. Jersey. So, without any further ado, OMN7, all three of you guys and gals who are in the studio, welcome to the Trenton 365 show. Thank you, Thank Jacques. Thank you, Jacques. Uh, you are so welcome. So, ladies first, introduce yourself and your area of expertise. Okay, so my name is Brass Rabbit. I am a fine art and documentary photographer. Um, I was formerly involved with the Sage Coalition, which was a arts collective in Trenton. Um, born and raised in Trenton, and I have been working here ever since. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Um, <laughs> my name is Billy D. <laughs> um, I'm also a photographer. Um, I'm in the field of fine art as well, and uh, I'm also a filmmaker. Uh, I've been raised in Trenton most of my life, but, you know, I was born in Haiti, but this was the first location we came to, so, yeah, this is just like home. Um, I used to uh, be involved in a little startup business out in Trenton called uh, Fun at Fun News. It, it was a little aggregate site, and uh, that's what kind of, like, led me into the production side of what I'm doing. And uh, now I'm just here with the guys, with the fellas, pursuing the art, making the most of it now, you know? Awesome. Yeah. And and Billy always smells so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he... He's got this this whole remarkable collection of, of oils and scents. He smells absolutely amazing. I'm a big Nag Champa fan, and uh, he's always got the Nag Champa on. I mean, mm -hmm. just the whole thing. And what are you wearing tonight, as a matter of fact? Nag Champa. <laughs> Man. All right. All right. So, anyway. So, so let's talk about the collective, right? Um, because, I mean, there's like Trenton, for example. We've <coughs> talked about this. Like Trenton's got a bunch of creatives who are here who are doing different things. Why, why a collective? What's the importance of having a collection of artists who are together um, working on, on projects? Well, the collective, uh, well, you know, it's, um, it's always better to do things in groups. You know, it's, uh, it's a lot more difficult doing things alone. Um, the idea behind OMN7 is that uh, OMN7 stands for Omni and uh, Omni at the end we removed the I and made it 7 so that uh, we take away self and focus on everyone that's in the collective and uh, Omni means omnipotent everything everywhere so that's where the correlation of that comes from mm -hmm. so and yeah uh, Rabbit could get into <laughs> it too um, as far as you know, why do Trenton artists need an arts collective is because we're in Trenton. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a handful of exhibition spaces, but we don't have the opportunity that an artist really needs to be able to get ahead and to be able to really make a living. So, you know, w you need support in order to get to other places. Um, you can do it alone, but you're always going to be better off working with other people. Um, so that's kind of, you know, another facet of what we're trying to do is we're trying to build ourselves up to where, you know, we get to the point where we can reach that hand down to other people and we can say, hey, like, we've got these great ideas. We want you to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. We want you to, like, get up on stage with us and do open mics and everything like that. So, um, yeah, you know, so it's we can get out to other people as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, toasty. Yeah, you know, it is warm in here. It, it is, is warm in here. You make yourself comfortable. So... 
so when we talk about the collective, right, and, and you touched on something, Rabbit, that, I, that I'm so passionate about, and it's about a marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've got lots of creative people, um, and I know I've, I've shared with you that we've got creative people, but I think that oftentimes creativity doesn't go hand in hand with ingenuity. And with ingenuity, that's how you get that marketplace. Because it's great if we got all kinds of people who are making things, but if no one's able to uh, excuse me, sustain a career or develop one or to make money, they're not going to stay here. Which I think, um, and you all know Will Caso, I think, which is probably one of the reasons, uh, one of the main examples of, hey, it was, just wasn't lucrative for him to be here. There was an opportunity for him to go somewhere else and do that. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about, from your perspective, an arts marketplace and some of the things that are needed to help sustain artists who are here? If, if I can just say something, um, an issue, the issue that you've been having and an issue that I've had too is we need studios. You need a space to create things and it is, as a photographer, extremely difficult to say, hey, can I, pay, can you, can I charge you $300 so I can invite you into my living room to take headshots? You know, like it doesn't, it doesn't really work like that when you're trying to form a business. Um, and there is quite a severe lack of those spaces available in mm. the city, um, even though we have so many empty spaces. Um, so, I mean, from the get-go, I would say probably spaces to create. Um, we, we have an, an okay market here for buying art, um, but that can always grow and that will grow with as we pull other people into the city and as you know we have other artists from other areas come in and um, um, you know, despite whatever you think of that concept um, mm. you know to help kind of add a little bit of gas to that fire for, for putting money in everybody's pockets and letting it kind of circulate around mm. okay Bill you want to add to that yeah for sure um more creative hubs, you know, locations and places where uh, people are focused on the arts as well. Just like what Rabbit was saying with the studios and having locations to actually work on your craft. There's not many around in Trenton, so that's mm -hmm. really essential to have. And <clears throat> not just the studios, as I was saying, we need like meetup places, places just dedicated to that. You know, similar like to artworks and like, you know, locations like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the workaround? What's the workaround for, you know, um, you and your friends um, who are doing similar work? Um, how do you how do you work around not necessarily having the proper space or maybe not having the right marketplace or not having a conducive audience that is encouraging, so to speak? I know the three of you travel quite a bit mm -hmm. um, and you're connected throughout this region and beyond. But but how, what are some of the workarounds that you have? Uh, all right. <laughs> I, you sure, have, sure, you sure. I have a I have a few. Um, I've recently been doing a lot more st in studio shoots, and the only reason that's been possible was because um, over the last few months, um, uh, an, acquaintance, uh, an acquaintance of mine, a friend of mine, Nazir, he uh, held the store at the House of High End. He allowed me to like use his space in the back. So just reaching out to business owners, you know, seeing if you could get that camaraderie, that partnership going on, like, you know, we could, could we work together to do something? Because it's going to work out for the both of us. I'm the artist. I'm the photographer. I need the space. He also needs you know the photos uh he has the bodies the faces to come through so it worked mm. that th those were that's one way mm -hmm. yeah okay rep um honestly i have kind of a similar answer I, and even thinking back to every studio space that i've had i have finagled it somehow like i've had a job and they had a room and i was like i need, I need that room as part of this contract you know like mm. i've done that where i've kind of strong armed my way into getting into spaces people didn't want me in and then i kind of wait until they kick me out so like mm. you know um and uh, photography where we have a little bit um of an easier leeway here because we don't get the floors dirty we don't we don't get wax on the floor our work is very clean and it's also something that people can wrap their minds around pretty easily when i say i want to use your back room for a photo shoot people say okay you're going to put up sticks you're going to put up a light or two you're going to have three people in here and then you're going to be out if i'm a painter and i have a i work on you know six foot by five foot pieces you know, I'm gonna have to bring it in. I'm gonna mark the wall. I'm gonna get paint on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, I might be there for months because it takes a long time. You know, so um, I mean, we have almost an even easier time with this issue. I think that you know, I would I'd be interested to see what a lot of painters do and a lot of sculptors do because mm -hmm. you know I know I have a hard time. But yeah. Now there's there's also a, a bit of a 
a growing movement here with filmmakers and with street photography, et cetera. Can, from your perspective, can you share how that works into um, OMN7, Omni7? What's, what's the best way to say it? I'm Omni. 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 All right. How that works in um, to the Omni, Omni Collective, like the street photography and then also um, um, filmmaking um, just outside work. Well, the, I guess I could speak about that since I'm more of the filmmaker. Um, with with that, it's it's more of a uh, like you know you, you gotta get your foot in the door. You gotta just do it. Just try it. Uh, walk out to people, ask them if they want to be a part of this screenplay you're writing. You know, make it a complete idea. You know, have your ideas put down and ready and marked down before you walk up to someone with an idea to do something make it seem a little more promising um that's what that's what uh makes this filmmaking around here a little easier i think there was a designer her name was shahida she's from philadelphia but she lives in Trenton. and she's yeah. actually doing like a segment on sickle cell anemia mm -hmm. and she had reached out to me to help her film it so it's not just you know independent filmmaking it's the designers it's the other business owners too mm -hmm. yeah shout out to shahida williams prom scholar for it's sure. a non-profit organization she's been on the program before another one of the amazing creatives along with Quayshan and nazir at the house of high end who are doing some awesome stuff as well oh, yeah for sure and when i talk about you know the uh, the amount of creativity that's here that's what i'm talking about we've got this this growing number of people who are truly involved in their in their craft and they want to make it better and they've got a larger vision um, and their vision is oftentimes a global vision and you guys are all part of that so thank you so much for that as well um, we're up on a short break um, can you share the contact information for Omni <laughs> oh, look at that all right well I'll tell you what why don't you individually share your contact information and then uh, sure, okay. after the break we'll get it all together sure um our social media is a uh, Omni cipher that's o, o M N I cipher C I P H E R. Our email address is O M N seven at yeah. gmail dot com. We're also on Facebook at O M N seven. And uh, yeah. All right, folks. You've been listening and watching the Trenton three sixty five show. We're up on a break. I'm with Omni O M N seven at gmail dot com is their contact information. We'll be back after a short break. <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody. It's Trust by Tony and Keisha. Let us be the inspiration for your Christmas shopping this year. There's so many amazing gifts to choose from for your apparel and accessory needs. Encourage someone, inspire someone, and give love this holiday season. Check out Trust by Tony and Keisha at TrustTK.com and let us be your choice for a great gift this year. All right, welcome back to the Triton 365 show. Send me an email, Triton 365 show at gmail.com. You can find me on social media platforms Facebook, Triton 365 show, Instagram, and Twitter at Triton 365. And you can always post your events to the Triton 365 community calendar page on Facebook. Events like the one that's happening this coming Thursday is going to be listed on there as well. So now Philip has tag teamed out with Billy <laughs> D. And uh, Philip is uh, the one who uh, I met originally when he um, came into the studio to talk about some of his artwork. We met a few years ago. I believe it was at Trenton Social. Yes, sir. Yeah, Trenton Social. You had on a sweatshirt that had this really cool graphic on it, and I think mm -hmm. it was a Chardé. Chardé, yep. Chardé. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and it had some, like, what I would say, it looked like digital prints over top of it. Yep. Little did I know that you were, number one, the designer of that, and that it was a very particular type of technique using um, coding Yep. to make that image and then you printed that image on the sweatshirt and I do have one in my house although my 15 year old has confiscated it from <laughs> me so it's no longer mine but anyway um, Phil welcome for coming back in and thank you for um, bringing some of your friends from Omni Arts Collective and again that web um, email is omn 
seven at gmail.com all right so phil let's let's talk a bit about your particular type of of art and briefly share without going into (laughs) details because i'm sure most people are going to be like what what is he even talking about coding and all this other stuff share a bit about what your art is and, and how you make it and what led you to do that okay well the style of art is called glitch art it's all done through manipulating computer code on the side of this, I do front end and back end programming as well. So, you know, if anybody needs a website, use that email. <laughs> but uh, other than that, what drives me to create pretty much is I make the type of art that I like to look at. And even outside of that, I make stuff that I know people like me would look at. Mm-hmm. And. I use art as a form of expression. I use it as a way to get out the thoughts that are in the back of my mind that I can't touch, but yet when, as soon as I start coding, it just all spills out and it all pours out of me. And then I'll look up four hours later from my laptop screen and I'll be like, oh, this thing, I made it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. But even outside of that, being part of the collective, because you know me, like I've been running solo for two years Mm -hmm. and then meeting these two they're honestly the most talented artists that I've run into in a long time and it makes me have to work three times as hard to keep up with them like when I tell you guys the concepts that we have coming for next year like even Rabbit's Photography the stuff that she's doing I now have to work four times as hard like I have gone back to shooting photography now because I had to (laughs) in order for me to step my work up and then the type of work that Bill's doing as well like just conceptually these concepts that he's building around these themes are like it's I can't there are no words that I can put into context to make it make sense but you'll see in 2019 Mm -hmm. and then even outside of that the other projects that we're working on we're working on a book right now Mm -hmm. where we have a show at Hopewell Valley Vineyards in April and we have several other things lined up we also have an event that's pending right now in Jersey City that'll be our first curated show and then on top of that the other things that we're doing outside just for kicks and giggles because we like creating Mm -hmm. it's very rare that you meet a group of people that you can create around not to say in a sense like uh you know there there have been collectives and there have been groups before but meeting a group of people that you can occupy the same space but they don't take away from that space they only add to it Mm -hmm. it's it's rare you don't find that Mm -hmm. so that's why we're a thing. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So Rabbit, um, Bill, although Bill stepped off, but Rabbit sitting next to Phil and to hear him say that, mm-hmm. um, what do, what kind of emotions does that <laughs> evoke in you? I've heard him say that like 700 <laughs> times. Um, and I, I'm lucky to. I'm lucky to. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so grateful for, for these two. Um, and, you know, for you being so open to express that. Um, uh, I think one of the other benefits of you know working with other people is not just trying to step your work up um and 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 the the rate that you're producing at but how much you're actually trying to get yourself out there how much you're actually trying to succeed because those things are completely different you can be an amazing artist and you cannot market yourself at all you can't push yourself you don't have to do any of that you can just create work in your basement and be fine working with other people i mean has pushed me exponentially to get myself out there because when when you do one thing and you throw it we have a group chat obviously when he, <laughs> when you when he, when he throws it in the group chat you know me and Bill see that and we're influenced by it and it makes us want to not only create more work but get our work noticed and move forward in our careers um, and I think that not only through challenging each other artistically we also challenge each other from a a progressive standpoint which is invaluable you know because in your own career if you work in business or if you do something else you know you're obviously going to move up if you do a good job but in art it's entirely up to you it's entirely up to you it doesn't matter if you're Mm -hmm. good or if you're bad if you're an amazing talker then you will succeed you know like like if you put in the administrative work, which a lot of us are horrible at. Um, <laughs> I know I work in an art gallery. Most of us are. Um, you know, you, you you will succeed if you respond to emails, if you, if you email magazines, if you enter competitions. Um, you know, and I think that that is like, yeah, that I'm, I'm so grateful for it. And 
I'm, I'm lucky to have found a group of people who like definitely challenge me and who make me wake up every morning and go, oh, <laughs> dang, I got to, all right, I got to, I got to start to run, run a little bit faster here. Got to work today. Um, yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, you, you, you both touched on a couple of things that um, I think are very important and, and, and you obviously you do as well. I mean, as the collective does, um, the marketing mm -hmm. and the administrative side of it. Um, again, oftentimes I think we all get channeled into our own spots, whatever they are, our comfort zones, et cetera. And then you need sometimes other people around you to encourage you or to motivate you or even stimulate you to say, no, you know, I, yes. I can do this yes. or let me try this or let me just bounce this off of them. Um, talk about how you are all using social media mm -hmm. to market yourself and to brand yourself. And then I want you to, to do that in the context of the importance of your particular brand, like what you're putting out there. So we have, uh, we all have very distinct roles that we play inside the collective. Oh yeah. Not just the <laughs> media oh, aspect yeah. of it. So Bill is the social media manager. Bill not only runs the social media, but he also makes sure that we post on time, make sure that it's posted, make sure that all the hashtags are right, make sure the <laughs> captions are there. Like he is the social media curator. Whereas, uh, whereas Rabbit is a creative director. She makes sure that everything is on time on point the verbiage is correct the wording is right and if it's wrong she will tell you, will tell you. <laughs> she will tell you and she will take a red pen to anything that we anything that we do like i remember i wrote a proposal one time and she tore it to pieces i thought it was fine i thought it was finished and she was like nah that's not right that's not right that's not right but even having the ability to work with somebody <laughs> like that exactly like it's not out of militia it's just like nah we're gonna fix this we're gonna make this right because this is us. We got to do it. We right. are a brand. We move, we move like Voltron, minus the costumes and the giant robot. But for now. We're going to get the costumes. For now. For now. Yeah, yeah, we will get there. Yeah. So I have a weird thing. Like in like two or three years, you're going to see me. I'm going to have a cape on at every art show I have. Like a cape and a mask. I don't know why. Who knows? He looks good in a cape. <laughs> so like we all play these very distinct roles, but it's all interchangeable and it's all intertwined with what each other is doing. Cause at one point me and Bill can swap out or at one point Rabbit and Bill can switch. Mm -hmm. It just all depends on like where we're at that day and what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Cool. You want to add to that? Robert? I mean, as far as social media, honestly, um, a lot of it is just trying to stay on trend with the way that the app is working, not necessarily with trends in general. Um, and it's funny for me to even say this out loud because I am notoriously bad with social media, just like in all facets of life. Um, but, you know, just trying to become, just trying to stay aware of what is changing and what isn't working anymore and what you maybe should change to do. Cause it will really, it'll, you know, you'll see a big difference. It's, it's kind of like the stock market. Mm. Treat treat your social media accounts if you're making money off of it like a stock market. You need to keep your eye on it, um, mm. and you need to stay up to date with all the information that's coming out because, it, like, yeah, like they're changing constantly. So great. Yeah. So I can't wait to chat more with you about the business yeah. side of what this collective looks like because um, I, I think I've been on my soapbox for a long time talking about how we need more collectives, we need more partnerships, we need more people in this region who have an understanding of that. Hey, we're all doing something good but we can do something better if we kind of work yeah. together we team up. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the team sports stuff in me. All right, we only got a couple minutes left, but I think it's super important for us to talk about what's happening on Thursday night at the Trenton Free Public Library. Mm -hmm. So uh, jump in there with that, please. So we have a 20-minute set where we will be doing two individual pieces apiece and then one group piece. The group piece was we've all had hands in writing, so it's very, hmm, what's the word I want to use? Mm -hmm. Dynamic hmm. would be the word I would use. So not only that, but then our solo pieces, they are very, it's more a look into us as people, not just as artists, but it's, it's the people that you see face to face, not what you see behind the screen, obviously on social media or on television, hey, but like it's the actual person that you see. And it's more, it's, it's basically raw emotion vocalized. Great, great. Um, what time and uh, what's the name of the event? Uh, so it is the pop-up poetry pop -up series. Poetry. And it is the last one the last of one their of the season. Year. Yes. Okay. Yep. yes. And we've been blessed to feature first. So if you get their doors mm -hmm. open at like 6 o'clock. Yeah, it's so be there on time. You know, folks, I want to say this um, before um, Omni Arts Collective leaves. 
let's start changing the dynamic with um, time. Yeah. And and if the show starts at six, get there before six. Get there at six. And be there prepared for the event to start at six. Yeah. I think that's an easy thing. Like, okay, in New York and Philly and big cities, they kind of get away with it. We're not quite there yet. So if it starts at six, get there a little bit early so you don't miss anything. And I think that you'll find that you actually motivate the performers more because then that keeps them on point and keeps everyone on task. So this is um, the pop-up poetry series, poetry series yeah. at the Trenton Free Public Library. It's it? ran by the uh, African, African American, American Cultural, Cultural Collaborative. Collaborative. Yep. Giovanni will be on next talking yeah. about that. So this coming Thursday, which is the 20th? 20th, yep. Thursday, December 20th at the Trenton Free Public Library from 6 to 8 p.m. It's the pop-up poetry cafe spoken word poetry etc and then upstairs there's going to be a <laughs> upstairs there's a, a fo fo photographic art exhibit that's opening as well uh, Amon's Brindled in partnership with, the, tr with uh, the Trenton Photo Club you've been listening and watching the Trenton 365 show reach out to Omni via email omn7 at gmail.com and links for that will be up on the Trenton 365 Facebook page and website have a great night Trenton 365 with Jacques Josh Howard, Howard. Howard. Oh, profiling the businesses, organizations, and people that make Trenton better.